So I'll grab the distance texture stuff, feed it in, and hopefully we've got our crashes sorted out here. So the raw data is, as we'd expect, nothing. And hopefully we're not blowing up with our locks and unlocks. Yes, we are not doing that anymore. Good. Alright, if we hit play, our pointer data is still trash. Why? The bulk data is just nothing. But our texture's there. Is it not... Is it not streamed in? Is that what's going on? It's probably that it hasn't been streamed in or something. So... I think it's what? This bulk data... F byte bulk data... Let's just search for those F texture 2D lip maps. Um, let's grab this bulk data. Untype bulk data. All right, maybe the mip map itself has this. Well, I want this texture 2D to be loaded in, so I think there's a pro it's like streaming in or something. I guess it's resident MIPS or something like that. Um, F texture platform data. Let me see. There's no sound, should be safe. Alright, so I need to figure out like why is this um, lock is returning null. So bulk data lock for Let's just see if there's anything in this forum post about it being null.
I guess some other people are... Because it has to be a specific type of texture for this to work properly. So if we go to that texture... This is... it's sRGB... let's see... MIPS, MIP level zero. It's a vector displacement map. It is sRGB. MIP gen settings should be no MIP maps is what these things. So I need TMGS no MIP maps is what it looks like. I still don't really understand why this isn't working then, because the only thing would be the MIP gen settings for this. Um, if we click on this water and we do like, you know, construct static height map. Still trash. Test water, static distance. Yeah, it's all there. Just not um not gonna load for me. So supposedly no mit maps. Let's just save that in there. Aha, so it is the mipmap settings. And there's our water direction getting reflected. It's not getting reflected, it's just being use, useful. Alright, so what we need to change is we need to change the creation of the texture to not have any MIPS for the distance texture stuff. So where do we make that? Where do we save this texture? It's in the blueprint, I'm pretty sure, for the water. So you have like it's inside of like save for construct static height map. Save texture assets is the function that we need, I believe. So this is an editor utils.
All right, so save texture asset, and we're gonna have a bool here for um, disable MIPS is false. So this is save texture asset. Disable MIPS. All right. And this is texture MIP gen settings equals TMGS no MIP maps. So let's go ahead and close all this stuff. I should be able to recompile this. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Bloody hell. So, you guys are talking about Johnny Ree's awesome new projects he's worked on for at least this week. Yeah, that's that's a pretty fun little project. I would definitely that's something that I would work on if if I was doing like hack day stuff. Some nice, not ridiculously complex goals, all that stuff. No, go ahead and talk about it. It's interesting. I'm just here slowly zoning out. Like I'm at that point of like hunger where you start like. Just getting distracted and not doing as much. You're just like, oh man, half your mind is like, I should, I should be getting food, and the other half is like, no, sit in your damn chair and stop whining. But I'd like to, I'd like to get to the point where I've got the reflections for the ripples, and then, then I can like, you know, go to the store and do a whole bunch of other crap. All right, so if I've got this thing open, let's just set the MIP gen settings to the wrong value and save it. And then let's do our construct. I need to change the blueprint for this. So the construct static height map needs to disable MIPS, needs to be set to true. This is the height map. What is this? This is static flow field. I'll probably need to disable MIPS on the flow field as well. Let's just go ahead and do that. The flow field? No, the flow field we're not going to be re... Uh, yeah, we will, won't we? We want the distances, or we probably also want that static height map, but disable MIPS on both of them? Yeah, I guess disable MIPS on everything for this. For the static distance field? Yeah, alright. Static height map. Let's open it. No MIP maps. And let's save all this. I'm gonna make the water, the little splashes move a little bit faster. Let's do wave speed. Let's triple that up. All right, so if I hit play, I shouldn't see the warnings. All right, I saw one warning, which is what we should see. So this ripple comes out. And we see the really crappy direction changes from our particles. <laughs> oh 
I don't think they're working. <laughs> it's, it's not working at all. They're going back towards the center. Yeah, I guess that's what they would do. They would just reflect back to where they were, they were going. That's pretty funny. So we can just like hook up a whole bunch of particles that are all reflecting. Well, they're not reflecting. They're just doing doing stupid stuff. I guess those aren't lasting long enough to actually look like they're doing much. Yeah, so I do need to get reflection in there. That's absolutely necessary, otherwise it'll like complete trash. Those are some interesting levels. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what we're doing. This it's a uh, totally dynamic, um, and this is the debug. I'm just drawing, you know, the amplitude stuff in there and um, it should it'll start working here once um, probably get the rest of it in there yeah we're able to get away with quite a bit you know ripples yay so we get the actual reflections in there it'll look, it'll look actually decent instead of just garbage town trash The ones where the reflection is almost the direct inverse, the, that area actually does look totally awful. So one of the things I want to look at is if I need to do anything else for the reflections or if just turning it straight around is going to look just fine. It looks like just turning it around is going to look just fine. Because that's what you'd expect. You'd expect, you know, these square wave ripple sorts of things. It doesn't look too absolutely awful. So I'm just looking at that little area there where if the reflection was actually proper. <laughs> You're making everything you learn obsolete. What? What do you mean? What is this? What is this anyway? So let's try to get our reflections actually working properly for this thing. Since we now have the information for this, uh, we need to find the normal about which to reflect our vector. So how are we going to do that? Um, So it's right here. Find the normal to the shore. So how are we going to do that? We have... We know which direction we are going. So... Um, let's make a new drawing here. So if we are impacting the shore 
I should actually draw, yeah, why don't I draw that circle again? Something like this. We've got this shore, and we're looking real close, like up here. We are this thing coming in. We know our direction. So in this case, the, the, the normal to the surface is like, you know, this direction. So this reflection would basically just go straight over itself. Um, so if we were coming in at like this, how would we discover what the normal is? Um, well, we could test around ourselves. We could test around ourselves, and what would happen is... is we would find... that sort of thing. Um, we could then say, well, how would we figure out that this is the surface and which direction the normal should be. Um, we know our position. Can we do it with just just three squares like this? Probably not. We probably need more. We probably need like at least a two. So what would what would this be like if if this was reversed we'd have the same thing How would I know which way that I should actually have a normal to this surface based on this thing? Um, I mean, I'm taking left to right here. Like, the normal is going to be rotated a certain. We're going to, like, rotate a vector. Oh, God, I don't want to do that on a per pixel level. Should we do a component-wise reflection and only have us reflect two directions or something? If we had enough particles, it would work okay. So is there an easy way to get the normal to this surface? If we have this information, we could test this out. We could get some information on that. Well, we know the direction we're going. Maybe we could do a lookup? Some sort of pattern based lookup. Well, if I did a test like this, I then took all the pixels here that, if I added up all the pixels that failed and averaged them together, I get the direction off in this direction. I could just 
add the vectors together in, on these things and in this square I would end up with you know all these values with a center of like right here so I could just average up all the things that pass and then normalize that vector and that's the normal and I'd reflect over that so just add them up all right it might work add up the the misses and then average and then subtract from from collision position and um, I guess that equals the normal and then what do we need to do to reflect All right, so we need, it's going to be the input, so it's going to be direction minus 2 times um, direction times normal. Well, that's dot normal. D dotted with the normal, multiplied by normal, and then 2 minus that. So we have to do the reflection on that. All right, so... Um, do tests in a grid, add all um, misses together, average them, normalize. Let's see, then we just do um, reflection vector equals um, direction minus Two times dir dot normal times normal. All right, so let's do a grid test. Int thirty two x. Let's just do int thirty two grid radius. Is let's just do a three by three grid. It might be too much. The other thing is I could pre-calculate the normal if I really wanted to for all this garbage. Um, why don't we see if it's actually a, a problem? All right, so grid radius is three, so let's just do four. X equals negative grid radius. X is less than or equal to grid radius plus plus X. And 32. Y equals negative grid radius. Y is less than equal to grid radius. Plus plus Y. X equals zero. And Y. Or, yeah, and Y equals zero. Continue. X and 32 AX equals X plus cx and 32ay equals y plus cy if ay is less than zero or a is less than zero ax is greater than or equal to size or ay is greater than or equal to size continue so f vector 2d um, Average and 32 num 0 f vector 2d 0 vector. So average plus equals 
Our direction is in world space. So we need to take from pixel space to world space. Oof. After we're done with this. Alright, so if cached distances dot r here is greater than zero. I mean if it's less than or equal to zero, continue. Otherwise do this value. Alright, so average divide equals by all right, so if num equals zero, otherwise we'll do stuff. If num equals zero, just to hell with it. It's degenerate. We don't want to do anything. So average divide equal by num. And then we need to get the Is our direction in... Yeah. So we need our x basis and our y basis. Yeah, we don't set our x-step and y-step over here, but we should. We should go ahead and do that. And then let's save our m, x, and y bases, and then we can just multiply by the basis in order to get our, um, our conversion, so we don't have to do anything crazy here. Let's actually set this to like a one zero zero and just zero one zero. Just because we can. All 
All right, so we'll get these initialized inside of all of our code. I'll just leave this alone. All right, so we need to It's going to be like average. Mm -hmm. We'll do it after this. So we've got our average, and our average is in pixel space, and we're going to convert that into that direction into world space. So we've got this thing. This is a position. So this position um, is in texture space. We should turn it into world space. Um, this position is going to be, yeah, so we just do f vector pause. Um, we're going to say pause.x. No, it's just pause equals average. Dot x, that's how you spell average, right? And the x basis, and then pause plus equals average dot y times in y basis. And then our direction is going to be our current position, our new pause. It's going to be average minus new pause, and then we're going to average dot normalize. So we now have our normal. So I'm just going to call this normal. No. So this is going to be Does this actually compile? It should be pause minus new pause and it's going to be pissed off because it should be a two-dimensional thing. Alright, so normal dot normalize. Alright, so basically what's gonna happen here is part m direction is going to be part m direction minus uh, two times I think it's just what we can do part in direction dot normal. Alright, it's just f vector 2d dot uh, we're gonna do normal and part in direction. multiplied by the normal. Well theoretically that's that's the reflection. And 
And since it's already normalized, it should be good to go. So let's see if that works. Let's see if I can linear algebra with the best of them. This is going to be biased based on scales, but I don't know. We'll see. That's just negating it, isn't it? That's why, it's because I'm testing the place that's already broken. So it's going to just be zero every single time. So what we want to do is this index is supposed to be AX plus um, size times AY. I'm like, that looks wrong. Is it Wednesday? It is Wednesday indeed. What year is it? Like a bunch of fish swimming around.
Yeah, that's that's looking correct. Let's throw um for such a long lived little system we have to we have to give it a lot more particles than we're currently giving to hold the line. Like we're giving it let's give it two thousand particles, which is twice as many as it had. Making a twitch bot you want it. Um well like what does it do? Whoops. Wait a minute, what is this? SX and SY are negatives. What? Right now it's just sad. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, not right now, not right now. Thinking about other stuff. So what is this get grid square for world position? Should be getting a top left and top right are totally things. What is this all pissed off about? It's probably not doing anything. I must be doing something wrong. Was it because of the number of particles? Like, why would the number of particles... Like, that's 2,000 particles. It must have been something to do with the compile step. Let's just throw 3,000 at it. So let's see, this calculated full field stuff is some But something's not getting initialized properly? The direction is like some undefined trash. It probably has something to do with not resetting this particle array properly.
Yeah, I bet we're not clearing. We're not clearing our particle data, and it's just turning into trash. So let's make sure of that. Alright, so maybe I can actually update the number of particles on this thing. Let's give it like 10,000. I mean, it's a lot of particles. X basis and Y basis are one and one? That's not possible. SX and SY are trash. This object is a map. The map is 512, 512, top left, top right. The X basis and Y basis are not correct though. What is this? Like, we set those things up. It's not about these particles. Why would recompiling this thing freak it the hell out? I guess because like we we don't call the reset function on it or something? There's some uninitialized data that's getting screwed up with our object.
Oh, Lucas. Um, I think. Let's see. We've got this thing, which goes. All right, so. Next step. Alright, if we hit play, on play this thing gets set up. X base, sorry, so the X and Y bases should be 1 and 0 and all that. That's fine, but it's when these things actually collide with the world is what it looks like. Something screwy happens. Nothing happened. Not this time. It's interesting, there are actually some places that are getting zeroed. Maybe we need a larger grid radius for this thing. So we have CX and CY. CX and CY are based on our new position. Well, let's just see. We will see if it works. But it's a little bit better. Why don't we just normalize this thing regardless? Maybe there's some floating point in that garbage coming in. Mesmos. <laughs> 